let us assume that we have a population of men and a population of women and we are interested in their income the income of women and income of men one of our friends claims that the mean income of men is greater than average income of women and we want to test this claim so what we do is write the hypothesis that we want to test or is under question and that is the average income of men in the population is more than the women's average then we write the opposite of that hypothesis uh, and in the opposite hypothesis is that the, the average income of men is less than or equal to average income of women and we write that down notice that one of these two hypotheses always include equality because equality is one of the condition so after we make these two possible hypotheses about the state of the income of men and women we call the hypothesis that includes the equality which is the average of men is less than or equal to average of women and the null hypothesis because this hypothesis is nullable and um, uh, we call it H0 and the other one we call it the alternative hypothesis and we call it H1 now we will tell our friend that look we accept this hypothesis that includes the equality the average of men is less than or equal to the average of women tentatively now, we see if such a hypothesis passes the test of empirical evidence and uh, we are going to take a sample from the population of men a sample from a population of women and uh, we see if what we observe uh, is consistent or likely based on the null hypothesis so we think okay what do we know about the distribution of the difference of the mean of the average income of men and average of income of women in two samples that we take we will ask our friend what would be a significant event that can happen that you would allow us to reject the null hypothesis and he says if you accept the null hypothesis and um, based on that acceptance you observe that something has happened that has 10 percent chance of happening then I accept that that is not a good hy hypothesis and can be rejected. But if you find that uh, something that has 20% chance of happening or 30% chance of happening based on null hypothesis, then I don't consider it significant and I won't allow you to reject the null. That is called the level of significance. So he accepts that if we observe something that has 10% chance of happening based on the null, we are allowed to reject the null. Let us see what we know about what happens if you take a sample from the population of men and population of women the threshold of the claim in the null hypothesis is that the average income of men can be at most equal to the average income of women and um, if you take that claim uh, let's say in a society that the average income of men is equal to average income of women if you take you uh, you know a couple of samples one from men and one from women sometimes the average income of men would be more than the average income of women sometimes the average of income of women would be more than men but um, if you think about the distribution of the the difference between the average income of men in a sample and average income of women in a sample uh, because we don't know the standard deviation of these two populations we cannot use the normal distribution Therefore, we have to switch to T distribution with a degree of freedom of 11. If you take a sample of seven people from the population of men and a sample of six from the population of women, the total number of men and women in the sample are 13. But we will know the mean of the women in the sample and the mean of the men in the sample. Therefore, we lose two degrees of freedom and we have to use a T distribution with a degree of freedom of 11 and if the if in the two population the average income of men and average income of women is equal then if we look at the sample differences sometimes the difference between 
average in the sample of men and average in the sample of women would be positive sometimes it will be negative but the average of these sample differences should be zero if there is no difference between the two populations also the standard deviation of the difference between the mean of a sample from men and the mean of a sample from women if you repeatedly do it um, the formula that gives us the standard deviation of the difference between these two is this formula um, which at first it looks um, complicated but once uh, we understand what is sp squared we'll see that it is not so uh, sp squared is the pooled variance and it's, it's nothing other than the weighted average of the sample variances at this point we will ask our friend if we take two samples one from the population of men and one from women and we see that the, the average of the men is less than the average of women um, okay we cannot reject your claim because you are claiming that the, the in the population of men the average is less than women however if we take two samples and we see that the average of men in the sample is much more than the average of women in the sample basically if we see that the difference between men and women is positive and men are earning more than women very far from your claim that you say that they are equal then we should be accepting that uh, uh, we reject your uh, null hypothesis so basically if this red area happened we will reject the null hypothesis We take a sample from the first population uh, in the sample we have seven numbers the mean of the first sample is 37 and the standard deviation of the sample from the men's population is 17.2047 then we take a sample from the population of women uh, six people are in our sample their average is 24 thousand dollar and the standard deviation in the sample is 6.1644 now to calculate the weighted average of the variances which is sp squared this is what we will do we will think okay how many people are in the first sample seven and we know their mean their mean is 37 therefore we lose one degree of freedom and the variance of the first, uh, the sample from men is 17.2 to the power of two. Then the weight of it is seven minus one because we lose one degree of freedom for every mean that we know. So when we are calculating it, we say, okay, six, seven minus one is the weight of the variance of the first sample, which is 17.2047 and the variance of the second sample is 6.1644 to the power of 2 and the weight of this one instead of being 6 is 5 because 6 observations in this sample but we lose 1 degree of freedom because we know the mean of the sample and uh, now of course when we are calculating the weighted average 6 multiplied by this and 5 multiplied by this therefore the denominator would be 6 plus 5 which is 11 or 7 plus 6 minus 2 which is 11 and then when we do the math we find out that the uh, weighted average of variances of the sample from men and sample from women would be 178 72 81 now we can plug the pool variance into the formula for here we have the uh, 178 which is the pooled variance and then one divided by the size of the first sample plus one divided by the size of the other sample and that gives us the standard deviation of the distribution of the difference between the two sample means the next step is that we have to find out that if this region is 10% of all of the possibilities what would be the border of this 10% what are those things that are far enough from the hypothesis that the two populations are the same uh, that uh, we can uh, that will enable us to reject the norm uh, we have to go to t table the row that is related to degree of freedom of 11 and we are interested in one tail significance of 10% Therefore, we see that in the column that is one tail, 
and in the row that is related to 11 degrees of freedom, we find that the T critical is this point. And the value of the T critical is 1.363. Now that we know what are those things that are considered significant, we have to find what is the observation. How far is the difference that we are observing between the two samples, the sample from men and sample from women, uh, compared to the claim? The claim is that there is no difference in the population. So the mean of our sample from men, which is 37, is bigger than 24. Um, so it is not consistent with the norm. But is it really that big that will enable us to, you know, the difference is that big that uh, we can claim that it's not the result of sampling variability? Is it really significant? So this 37 minus 24 uh, is the difference that we are observing uh, compared to the claim, zero, uh, divided by the standard deviation of the variations of the difference, gives us a uh, the number of a standard deviation that our observation is far from the mean is 1.74. So basically, our observation is 1.7478 standard deviations far from the uh, claim that it is uh, the difference is zero or even the claim that the mean are less than one, which is all of this slide. In fact, it is the reverse of the null hypothesis, not slightly, not insignificantly, but in the significance and in the rejection area. Since our observation is in the rejection area, we will reject the hypothesis that the average income of men in the population is less than or equal to women's average, and instead we will we have to accept the hypothesis that the average income of men in the population is more than women's average.